song number 96. <clears throat> number 96. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in all of you. I stand, I stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in all of you. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words. Too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty enthroned above, and I stand, I stand in all of you. I stand, I stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in all. So grateful for your presence here today. For those that are watching online, we are grateful that you've chosen to do so. I want to uh, introduce our uh, JAM program. There are some who are visiting with us today. You need to be aware of it, that we are... Each Sunday morning during the sermon period, we invite our children that are age three to third grade to go to a class. It's being taught by some of our folks, and they'll enjoy a Bible lesson geared just for them. So they're being dismissed right now. If you are a child between the ages of three and third grade, by all means, make your way back toward the uh, classroom uh, through the fellowship hall area. We stand in awe of our God because our God and His Son are excellent in every way. In every way. Amen is correct. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, the Apostle Paul writes that whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, whatever is, if there's anything worthy of praise, if there be anything that is excellent, Think on these things, and beloved, our God is excellent. Our God who is just and pure and lovely is both worthy of praise because He is excellent. Excellent in every way. The songwriter wrote, and it's number 215 in your songbook, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is Thy name. How excellent is Thy name in all the earth who has set thy glory above the heavens. We will praise thy holy name forever, evermore. We will praise and magnify thy name forevermore. We will laud and magnify thy name forevermore. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. Amen and amen. That song is actually based on Psalm 8 and verse 1 where those very words occur, that our Lord, how excellent is Thy name in all the earth. Indeed, our God is excellent. He is excellent 
in every way. And so when the the Apostle Paul, in praying for the saints of God in Philippians chapter 1, prayed that they might approve those things that are excellent, so that you might be pure and blameless in the day of Christ, that you may approve those things that are excellent. That means to talk about them, to highlight them, to focus on those things that are excellent. There is no better focus than on our God who is an excellent in every way. And so I will do that today. The entirety of my sermon is meant to be a doxology, a worship in God, a worship to God in all of his excellence, and to bring out all those things about God that are most excellent. This message will be what you and I should do every day. To spend time talking about all the ways in which our God is awesome. And then why we stand in awe of Him is because He is excellent. Excellent in every way. It should be in our conversations and in our thoughts. We should be dwelling on this on a daily basis each day. And so we'll consider today those ways in which God is excellent in every way. First of all, His power. God's power is exceedingly excellent in every way. The Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18 that he prayed that the eyes of our heart might be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope to which we have been called and what are the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints And watch this, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, to usward who believe? He goes on to say in verse 20 that the reason or the way in which he displayed that power in its greatest moment was when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead and set him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Jesus is Jesus was the glory of God's power, the epitome of it, the focus of it. The sun that you see each day in the sky is a massively powerful sun, S-U-N. Massively powerful, 93 million miles away, and yet it gives us the warmth and the growth that we experience. Life itself is dependent on what that sun is capable of doing. Did you know that every second of every day, the sun releases an estimated 385 yattawatts. Never even heard of that word until I did this research. 385 yattawatts of energy every second. A yattawatt is the largest measurement of wattage that there is. And one yattawatt is the equivalent power to a hydrogen bomb. What that means is, is that every second the sun is discharging energy, 385 yottawatts. It's like 385 atom bombs are going off all at the same time on the sun every second. That is the immense power that the SUN has. And all of the power of God is focused not on this sun that, that we revolve around, but rather on the Son of God itself. Well, you can take a magnifying glass. I I got this magnifying glass so I could look out into the audience and just see how pretty Lou is. Oh, wait a second. That's not right. But in any case, I got this magnifying glass. Maybe when you were a kid, you did this. You took the sun and you got it just right and you could focus this magnifying glass down onto a piece of paper into a fine little beam And it'd burn a hole in that paper. That's how powerful it is. I'm telling you that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, that all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all things I've commanded you. But my point is this, that Jesus said all that power, all that power of the universe, of the heavens and on earth, is all focused on Him. And your life and mine should also be focused on that very Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the power that He wields. It is the power of the S-O-N that is so magnificent in the power of God. So here's the application for this point. That exceeding power has the ability to change you. And God has wielded all of that power, focused it all on you and me. 
that he might give us the life and the glory that he wanted us to have through Jesus Christ. And so in Ephesians 3 and verse 20, in referring to God's exceedingly excellent power, Paul writes, God is able to do far more exceeding, yours may say abundantly, then all that we ask or think, watch this, by the power that's at work in us. To Him be glory in the church. Now, I understand the power of God. I've been talking about it the last few minutes. I understand how exceeding powerful He is and, 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 and how great that power is. But I want you to notice this verse says that power is focused in us. It's at work in us with the whole intent of changing us, not not, not so that we're going to be something great or glorious, but rather because He wants to change us to be the people that we can be, we can be for Him. That exceeding power that's able to fix you and fix me is not just in the universe. It's in us. But now the power is not of us. It is in us. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7, Paul writes that we have this treasure, referring to that power, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the amazing power belongs to God and not to us. But just know this, my friend. You got issues in your life? Surrender your heart and your life to Jesus. He has the power to change your life. And it's so excellent that He can change us. But secondly, our God is excellent and His Son are excellent in every way. Because of Jesus' saving grace is exceedingly excellent. The excellent power to change and fix your life and mine is predicated on the grace that God has. And even as His power is insurmountable, almighty, and it's all focused in Jesus and what He can do in your life, so also is His grace focused in Jesus and on your life and mine. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how bad the person you are. Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 1 about his own life and the mess he had made of it. And he said, I was before a blasphemer and a persecutor, injurious, he went on to say. Yet how be it I obtained mercy. And then he says this, And the grace of our Lord abounded exceedingly. God's grace is so excellent. With faith and love that is in Christ Jesus. So then he concludes, faithful is a saying, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And he goes on to say, So therefore, how be it uh, for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me, the chief of sinners, God might show by example through Jesus Christ His patience towards sinners. Paul said, you want to see an example of what God can do by His grace? He said, look at my life. Look at what I was and what I am. And my friend, you and I should take courage in that. That God's grace is so excellent that it would take the worst among us and make that individual the best among us by His grace. The application. The application is that in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 7, Paul, speaking about our broken lives and how they can be changed by His excellent grace, said this, that God showed the exceeding riches of His grace in kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, for by grace you have been saved through faith. The exceeding riches of His excellent grace. That is the reason why the psalmist in Psalm 36 and verse 7 said that you and I should put our trust, our trust in that excellent love and grace. The psalmist wrote, How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore, here's the application, therefore the children of men should put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. It's, it's envisioning a, a, a mother hen, if you will with her wings kind of outstretched. Maybe the weather is terrible and it's pouring down rain and lightning and thunder and she spreads her wings over her chicks. And that is the grace of God. How excellent. How excellent it is. Thirdly, our God and His Son are excellent in every way because Jesus' promises are exceedingly excellent and precious, so says Peter. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, Peter writes, that according to His divine nature and divine power, God has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, watch this, through the knowledge of Him who called us. Through knowing Him, He's given us this knowledge. He goes on to say, through Him who called us to glory and virtue. 
And by this, we are given exceeding great and precious promises. God's promises are so, are so excellent. They're so excellent. The Hebrew writer alludes to these promises in Hebrews chapter 6. When it says in verse 13, For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no greater by whom he could swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and I will multiply you. And so he gave promises to Abraham. And as the Hebrew writer develops this argument or this, this discussion about the promises of God throughout history, he sums it up in chapter 8 with saying that Christ is the mediator of so many far more excellent better promises. So he says in Hebrews chapter 8, as he continues this argument, he says, but as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old covenant in that he mediates a new covenant, which is better since it is enacted on better promises. These excellent promises that are given to us in Christ First of all, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, Paul talks about how that you and I should keep our eyes on the excellent prize. Among the promises of God is the eternal promises of the resurrection and of eternal life, and that you and I should stay focused on that. He says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, 17, that for our light affliction, which is for the moment, works for us more and more exceedingly an eternal way to glory. While we're looking not at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things that are not seen, now these are eternal. And so our focus should be on eternal things. Those promises that He gave us, such as the resurrection in the heaven to come. And He calls it an exceedingly eternal weight of glory. But not only are we keeping our eyes on that prize, but the promises also entail what He'll do for us now. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing right now. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He goes on to say that in blessing us, he says, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. And in love, he predestined us for the adoption as sons. This is a list of blessings, of promises that He's given to us right here, right now. Excellent promises predicated on our sonship with Him. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, maybe one of the most precious of all the promises. In Matthew chapter 28, as He was about to leave His disciples, He had resurrected from the dead, and now was about to ascend to heaven. He said to them that they were... that. That's the text where he said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. But he goes on to say to them, He goes on to say to them, And lo, I'll be with you always, even to the ends of the age. That promise that he would be with us, no matter what we go through. If you're going through a hard time, well, we've got folks that we've been talking about in our announcements and our bulletin, we've been praying about them, going through terrible hard times. Hugh Sieber was mentioned in our announcements. I spoke with him about a week ago. Difficult for him to speak. And by the way, Hugh was among those, him, him and Tisa are among those that watch our worship services streaming. They have for the last year and a half. He virtually every week, they text me and talk about our services and stuff that they've watched. In any case, going through terrible, hard, hard times. Understand this. When you're going through these hard times, he's promised, I'll be with you. And those are the reasons why His promises are so excellent and precious. That He would walk with us. He didn't promise that we wouldn't have hard times. He promised He would walk through us in those hard times. And that's an excellent promise. Fourthly and finally, our God and His Son are excellent in every way. In that our relationship with Him can be so excellent. So excellent. Exceedingly excellent. In fact, the excellence of having a relationship with Jesus is worth everything. And so here comes the challenge. If you believe He's excellent in every way, then you should so much want a relationship with Him. Be willing to pay whatever cost there is to it. Right up front, I'm willing to exchange everything 
is the attitude that we should have. That was the attitude that Paul had in Philippians 3. In reference to a relationship with Jesus, here's what Paul said about his own life. He said, I count all things for loss, watch this, for the excellency of knowing Christ my Lord. He said, I trade everything. He said, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as dung that I might gain Christ. I, I didn't choose those words, God did. That everything he had in his life, and by association, everything we have in our life, is nothing more than dung compared to what he can give us. And we should trade it all, if need be, that we might have this relationship with the most excellent of God. And so he says, I count all things for loss, for the excellencies of knowing Christ my Lord. And then it goes on to say this in Philippians 3 and verse 10, the 10th verse of that text so that I might know Him and the power of His resurrection, the fellowship of His sufferings, and become conformed unto His death. Paul said, I'd trade everything just so I can know Him, have this relationship with this God who is excellent in every way. So the application for you and me, do you know Him? Do you? Do you know Him as Lord? Do you know Him as Savior? Do you know Him as your King? Because it's in that relationship that you find just how excellent God can be in your life. Jesus, during His ministry, promised His disciples in John 14 and verse 23, if anyone, if anyone, that would include you and me, if anyone loves me, He will keep my word and here's the result. And my Father will love Him and we will come to Him and will make our home with Him. Anyone, you're sitting here this morning, my friend, and maybe things aren't good in your life. Maybe you've got issues with sin. Maybe there's aspects of your life just falling apart. Understand that God doesn't just say, if you'll just start making the journey, you can get to Him. He says, if you're willing to love Him and do what He says, He will come to you. He will come to you. I mean, this isn't the mountain coming to Muhammad. This is Muhammad coming to the mountain. This is, this is God coming to us so that He might dwell with us. In that relationship, my friend, you find excellence. He comes to us. So I ask you this question as we end. Who are you living with? Oh, I don't mean the lady sitting next to you. Who are you living with? Because I assure you, you can't live with the devil and find a home in heaven one day. You've got to choose who you're going to live with in your life. You're sitting here right now and you either have this relationship with Him that's so exceedingly excellent, or you don't. And it is totally your choice. He says, turn to me in love and willingness to do what I say and I'll come to you. You'll get all that I have to offer. And most importantly, I'll be with you. I'll live with you. I'll make my home, He says, with you. Our God is excellent. Our God is excellent in every way. It is the reason why the songwriter wrote, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is Thy name. How excellent is Thy name in all the earth. Who has set Thy glory above the heavens. So we'll praise in Thy holy name forever, evermore. We will praise and magnify Thy name forevermore. We will laud and magnify Thy name forevermore. O Lord, our Lord. How excellent, how excellent is thy name. Amen and amen. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, as I said earlier, Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is anything worthy of praise, if there be anything that is excellent, think on these things. And so we have done for the last 25 minutes or so. We thought on those things that are most excellent and worthy of praise. It is indeed our God. Our God is excellent, is excellent in every way. But perhaps you don't have that relationship with Him. Then I encourage you, consider coming to Him today. Consider coming this moment. If you'll respond, listen to what He says. I will come to you and make my home with you. And that, my friend, invites the almighty power of God into your heart and into your life. It'll change you forever.
if you'll come as we stand and sing. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other can I know. Nothing but the blood. So grateful for your presence today. Charlie, you may say a word for a moment. Grab, grab a microphone, buddy. We got people online that may so want to hear it too. Most people, most everybody knows who I am. There might be a few new people that don't, but um, that's my first chance to hear Cliff preach since uh, uh, since I left here. And uh, Cliff, outstanding. Outstanding Thank message, you. outstanding. And I'm glad to know this church has somebody that's following the footsteps of the guy that brought this church so far with such great preaching for so many years, Richard Williams. Very blessed. I just want to say thank you to this congregation. Uh, here recently, I've just kind of been digging back through things, and I found all these pictures of when I was here and kids and Christmas parties and just all kinds of stuff, just really filled my life and my heart full of memories, wonderful memories. Uh, you helped raise my kids and so many wonderful things that we had uh, in those years that were here. I spent, I guess, about 10 years of my life here with this church, um, and it was such a great blessing. I just want to thank you for how you blessed our lives in those years. I have many, many fond memories, um, and whatever work I have been able to continue to do for the Lord, um, you're part of the encouragement that uh, helped me as I went forward even after leaving Grosbeck. God bless you. And thank you, Richard, especially, uh, for your love and friendship since the 1960s. Woo! <laughs> thank you, Charlie. Thank you. And I'm sure enjoying the house that the church purchased from you for my benefit. So glad to have him with us today. Glad to have all of you here. And, uh, and uh, I, I am suspecting that Hugh and T. Sieber are watching online. We love you, brother, and want you to have blessings. Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, I'm actually going to have a second part here. This is going to be a twofer. Uh, next week, I'm going to spend the entire sermon on how excellent is his name, which is technically what that song was about, how excellent is his name. What is so excellent about the name of Jesus? You'll find out next Sunday morning. And God bless you as you spend this week. May it be safe. In keeping with this morning's lesson, turn with me, if you will, back to song number 96. We'll sing song number 96, after which we'll be dismissed in prayer. Number 96. You are beautiful beyond description to
pray together. Heavenly Father, we do stand in awe of You. You're an awesome God. You're mighty, powerful, wonderful, exceptional in all ways. Lord, we just want to thank You for being loving and kind to each one of us. As Your children, we, we pray that we please You, that the worship that we offered You today is acceptable. Lord, we ask that we offer our lives to You on an everyday basis. Our hearts are always Yours. That we reach out to others, that we show them just how wonderful a God You are. Lord, I ask that You be with each of us throughout this next week. Help us as we try to show others Your love and kindness and mercy that we have felt from You and that they desperately need. Lord, thank You for the blessings of Your Son. Thank You for the blessings of each of us knowing one another and helping one another in being with each other. All these blessings You give to us, and it's through Your Son that we pray. Amen.